Okay, so last time we did compare immediate and compare just works by taking a value out of the A register, subtracting a value from memory or from uh, the next byte in the program, and then using that result to set some registers. And that's really important because compare is a big part of being able to do branching and loops and stuff like that, and, you know, adding a value, wait until it gets to a certain value, and then branch back to the start or carry on with the program. So that's quite an important one. So we just put in some tests for compare immediate, and we got those working, got them from this Atari page, atariarchives.org. We put in these four tests basically and got those to work. So this time I want to get through the rest of the addressing modes and I might refactor these tests and do the same thing we did with the add with carry tests, which is make just one function that we call multiple times with like some test criteria just to maybe make this easier to refactor and maybe make this easier to do. So I'll do that first. I'll just take one of these tests. In fact, what I'll do is I'll take what we did in the add with carry is we made a little test structure and we can do the same thing here. Um, this would be a compare test structure. Um, and what did we but what do we care about? This is like the input to the program. So we care about the A register, the operand. We don't care about what the answer is because we don't store it in this particular case and we don't care about what any of the flags are before because it doesn't matter and we only expect the carry zero and negative we don't care about the overflow flag because it's not affected so there's our little test data and now we can just refactor one of these out into uh, cmp immediate and that takes in one of these we call that test usually. So we did it in the other ones. And then we just take all our data from that and put it into here. So we have, we just put the opposite of the flags in there just to reverse the test. So we're just putting the opposite of what we expect at the end. Um, we have the A register. In fact, we've got a few more tests of this to do with the X register. Hmm. Don't know. We'll come. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. The operand is what we ex uh, was what we're operating on from memory. Number of cycles stays at two, and then we expect the A register to still be the A register, and then we expect these to be equal to the values that we put in in the test. So we just refactor that. We're just going to stop copying and pasting code basically as much copy and pasting code. Test expect Z. Okay, so now we can make one of these in here and just call compare immediate with that test. And then we just put in the data that we want. So we expect the carry flag to be true. We expect the negative flag to be false. We expect the carry to be true. Oh no, we've already done that one. Zero to be true. And we want the A register to be 26. And the operand, which is the value in memory, in this case is also going to be 26. So if I delete that now, I just going to tidy up a lot of the code since we're repeating this four times makes life a lot easier so that doesn't change anything it still passes so let's just take that and we'll do the same thing for this one with the different data this one I think is 48 and we expect 0 and to carry to be false false true and um, I think that's, that's the same isn't it false false true okay that should still pass it does and we'll do one more down here oh no two more this one is 130 but my comment there is like ah that's a negative number and it's 0 and to carry is false false true again Got that one. And then one more down here. This one is eight. And we expect false, true, false. So I just think we've got less code, we've reduced the amount of code we've got to manage there. 
Excellent. Right. So that hasn't really changed anything. It's just made our test a little more compact. So now we can duplicate this and we can do a zero page version of this. Mouse point on there, zero page. So zero page version will, instead of reading the value straight away, the next byte is actually the address in the zero page that we want to read from. And then we put the operand in that place in the zero page. So in theory, everything else stays the same there. And now we can duplicate all these tests, these four, and Let me just do that again. I'm just put a little marker in there so I know where I was. Okay, so this is zero page. So really, this allows us to just do that and change that to zero page. That's really all we've got to do. And now we, now we've basically made the zero page version of this test. It's not easy to get to there. Here we go. Uh, yeah, and I've said this before, and you could argue that actually we don't, we don't actually need, we could actually make these, refactor these up. Let's do it anyway. Let's do it on this one. So I'll do a, I would just want something that returns the test data that we're going to use for these. Um, and that would be like this. So what's this one? This is compared to identical values. I'm just going to try and make these tests a lot more compact. Don't know if this is worth doing. It could be because we're going to repeat all this. So two identical values and then we return the test. So now I can just do that. It's not as, not as readable though, because you can't really see what's going on in there. I mean, I don't know if that's good, but that's, that's what we could do. And then uh, compare a large part to a small positive. Let me just, oop, just put these here for now. that one um, this one again I'm just doing the, the work of factoring this out Maybe this may, I don't know. We'll see at the end if this has made anything more readable or not. It's, I think it's certainly going to reduce the lines of code, but reducing the lines of code doesn't necessarily make something more readable. It just gives you less, oh, it just gives you less lines of code. And I've just, and the last one, This all goes in here. Okay, so now I can just refactor these and make this slot the same as well. A negative number to a positive. And right. So is that more readable? I don't know.
Um, it certainly made the test smaller, but I don't know. There we are. Right. Now, finally, uh, yeah, I should get only two tests fail. Why have only two tests fail? There should be more. Compare zero page, can compare a negative number to a positive. That actually passed. I haven't written it yet. How's that possible? How, how could this pass? Oh, because, <laughs> uh, because it's, it's supposed to be this. I was thinking there's got to be more failed tests than that. Do I just put ZP on for those? Okay, that makes more sense. Weirdly, some of those tests managed to pass before with the broken data. Is 42 is actually 26, isn't it? Is that right? Uh, is 42, 26 in decimal. Uh, hex 42. It's, no, what we're talking about, yeah, it's gotta be a bigger number, isn't it? Why, why, did those, why did those pass before? That makes no sense. Anyway, I'm not gonna to look too hard into that. Okay, so we want, yeah, zero page version. So, okay, that makes more sense that we didn't, we didn't actually tell it to run the correct instruction. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Right, I'm looking for four failed tests, not two. Oops, and I'm not looking for a breakpoint anymore. Four failed tests, okay, zero page ones are failing now. Wow. Shows you how like you can take some code that's completely wrong and it can even pass the test. So instruction 197, not handled. So let's put that one in. So zero page. So this one is slightly different to this one in that we don't fetch a byte, read a byte. Oh no, we do fetch a byte from the program, but we've got functions to do it. So we've got address, uh, zero page, which does fetch a byte, but not in quite the same way. So that just gives us a address, and that's the address where we actually want to do the rest of this. Now this is the part where we actually just want to take that and keep repeating it. Um, we can do it the same way we do these ones, these adverb carries, because we basically read the operand at that point, and then we want to do that stuff there. So this is where I'm going to factor that part out and try and fix both tests at once. So let's put this one up here as well. Um, I think, oh, let's put it below ADC. This is going to have the same uh, signature is this one which just takes in an operand and it does some weird stuff. Uh, I don't think we care about decimal mode on that one. So we're not going to call it ADC, we're going to call it compare. Um, so that's the processor status. Uh, compare cpx cpy instruction. Okay, so given the operand, we can just do the compare. So that's going to be the same code. Oh, where are we? It's getting a big statement now. So that can all get replaced here with operand, and this can be the same code running down here. Right, hopefully we've got no failing tests and we do have zero page working. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> oh, this is because I've set the cycles wrong, haven't I? This zero page one takes three cycles. And I didn't see I set it to two there. So I think that's what's failing. I think this, the code's actually right. I think it is taking three cycles. Yeah, there we go. So uh, that's the zero page done. So now we're back into the uh, we're back into rinse and repeat time, 
uh, this bit I'll probably just speed up because I'm literally going to do what I just did there with zero page except I'm going to do the same thing with all of these addressing modes. So uh, let's do that. Okay, so that's it. So so the four tests that I wrote originally, the ones that were on this Atari page, I basically duplicated those all against all the addressing modes. I haven't tested the page crossing things because I know we've tested that before. So that is compare A register working correctly, I believe. We're almost there to be able to write, well, we can write loops now technically. Uh, we just can't do it with the X and the Y register. So I think that's what I'll do next time. Um, I'll implement the compare X and compare Y, which will be a lot easier now. I've got all this unit test code and there's only three addressing modes. So it's a lot simpler. So next time I'll do those two and then we've done quite a lot of those, but that is another eight instructions done. Uh, so we're really getting there to having quite a full suite of stuff going on here and it's 209 tests which probably isn't as many, probably should have written more, but um, I don't want to write extraneous amounts of tests that'll just duplicate stuff that we know we've already tested in this particular emulator. They won't have much value. So that's really good. So compare is done, and maybe next time I'll write a little for loop, or the equivalent of a for loop, and we'll see if we can actually get that working. So uh, I'll catch you in the next one.